All right. Um, over this weekend, I guess not over the weekend. What day is it today? Saturday. So yesterday, yesterday or earlier today, there were elections in Great Britain. These are uh, significant elections. These are council elections, or uh, kind of what you'd call local elections, state elections. Um, and uh, in London, uh, these are elections for um, uh, these are elections for what for uh, council members, mayors, uh, but city councils basically, city uh, regional councils. So no states in England, uh, but but councils like that. Uh, anyway, uh, the the results are pretty much in uh, for uh, this round. And uh, it, it, the conservative, the conservatives, who are, of course, the governing party in uh, in England, and who have dominated uh, British politics for a long time, and and of course under Boris Johnson, last election, won an, a, a, this amazing historic victory where they gained a clear majority of the House of Parliaments. In these regional elections, just got clobbered. I mean, got clobbered. They lost about just under. 50% of all the seats they were running, they lost almost 50%. Uh, so uh, they took a huge loss. Uh, Labour, the, the left-wing party in England, was the big winner, but really all political parties were, were winners, uh, except for the, uh, for, for the, for the uh, that, well, all of them were winners, but the party to the right of the Conservatives, um, the Renewal Alliance, I think it's called, Gained, you know, they, they were up by 25%, but only 11 additional seats. So they, they, they're not a, they, they don't seem to be a, a big political force in, in the UK right now. Uh, the Greens uh, gained about 50%, the uh, almost 50%. The independents, independents, I guess in this election, they're independents. In the parliamentary elections, you don't really get independents. Uh, they gained, uh, you know, what is that? I'd say about, yeah, about 50% as well. Uh, Labour gained about uh, 10%, 15%, so maybe closer to 20. Uh, so they were the big winners, big winners. Uh, they, they, they dominate local councils now. They dominate mayoral races. Uh, the uh, the uh, mayor of London, uh, the uh, uh, Sadiq Khan, who is a, uh, who is a Muslim and is quite leftist and quite woke, not that Muslims are typically woke, but he is, uh, won a third term, unprecedented third term, at the helm of the city of London. Uh, the, I think one of the big winners, 20% increase, uh, were, were the lim liberal, liberal Democrats, liberal Democrats. And one of the reasons, from what I can kind of get out of the voting, is they won... In, in some of the heavily Muslim areas. And the reason is that both conservatives and Labour are pro-Israel. Now, Labour is not all pro-Israel. Uh, they, uh, they are people who are... Um, uh, th there are people within the Labour Party who are very anti-Israel. The former head of the Labour Party, whose name escapes me right now, uh, was very anti-Israel, hated Israel, but he's been kicked out. The current leader of uh, the Labour Party is quite, uh, quite pro-Israel. Uh, but the liberals, the liberals have always been very pro-Palestinian. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, thank you. Jeremy Corbyn was very anti-Israel, and he was kicked out as the head of the Labour Party. But the liberals have always been very pro-Palestinian, interestingly enough. I never expected that. And the... Um, so the Liberal Party gained quite a bit, particularly in Muslim areas. Uh, Labour lost, could have gained a lot more votes in uh, those uh, Muslim areas if they had been uh, anti-Israel. Of course, uh, they might have lost some votes as well, but not that many. I mean, there are not that many Jews and not that many pro-Israel votes in England as to sway uh, Labour. And it's not, again, not that important an issue except for the Muslims. It's interesting, the Liberal Party, I once debated, my first debate on Israel-Palestine, I don't know, this is years ago, maybe 12, 13 years ago, my first debate on Israeli-Palestinian issue with, was with a member of parliament from the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the debate was at York University, 
which is in the very north, northeast of England. And it was, um, wow. I mean, 90% of the audience, 90% of the audience, 15 years ago, was anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian. Uh, it was a little scary, I have to say. It was a little, little, um, very antagonistic, a little intimidating, or at least attempted to intimidate. Uh, and um, it, it gave me the first sense of, of, of what these, uh, these universities are like, right? Um, so, and that was a liberal democratic member of parliament, violently anti-Israel. So right now in the city councils, in the councils all over England, Labour dominates with 1,140 council members. The Liberal Democrats come in second with 521, and the Conservatives third with 513. I mean, the Conservatives have been relegated to the third largest party, at least at local elections, in the UK, which is stunning, stunning. They were, not that long ago, the largest. This does not bode well for an election that will probably happen late this year, early next year, uh, a parliamentary election, national election uh, in, in the UK. It does not bode well for the Conservatives. It, I, I pretty much guarantee at this point, you never know with elections, but you can pretty much guarantee at this point that um, Labour will form the next government with everything that that implies. Uh, uh, Labour is quite a bit more left generally than is the Democratic Party in the United States. Uh, and uh, it, it's going to be a bit... Liberal Democrats tend to be um, liberal in a, in a positive sense, pro-markets pro and, and pro-liberty. Uh, on most issues, so they're, they're on social issues, more liberal... Uh, and on uh, then the social issues more liberal than conservatives, and on economic issues more liberal in terms of free market than the left. Uh, so there's somewhere in the middle, more secular, more less traditionalist. But uh, anyway, that that's what uh, liberal Democrats are in uh, in England.